If you've started studying economics or are just curious about the subject and want to know more, then this is the right place for you. This video introduces the basic economic problem and is one of a series that covers the content of the OCR and AQA GCSE economic courses. If you want to see the whole series, then check out the playlist and subscribe so you'll find out when more videos are uploaded. To call the economic problem basic can be a bit misleading because it's anything but simple to solve. The economic problem itself is how to best use limited resources to satisfy unlimited wants. There really isn't enough of most things in the world to adequately provide what people would like to consume. The study of economics has risen out of trying to solve this problem or looking at how different participants in the economy interact with each other to decide three things. The first is what should be produced in terms of goods and services. The second is how it should be produced. And the third is who those goods and services should be produced for. The problem is created by two opposing situations. As consumers, we assume that our main aim is to maximise our economic welfare, to get the most benefit that we can in our lives. So we tend to have unlimited wants. There's a distinction to be made between wants and needs. Needs are limited to what we must have to survive. For example, food, water, shelter and clothing. And the resources in the world could conceivably cover these for its whole population. Wants are things that we'd like to have, and these are unlimited or infinite. However much a consumer has of something, they'll want more of it, or more of something else. For some, it may be wanting more to eat than they need to survive, while for others, they may want another car or a heated outdoor swimming pool. What we aren't taking into account here, though, is whether a consumer is able to buy something, whether they can actually afford it, and we'll go more in depth into this in the demand topic. But because of the willingness to consume is there, we can say that our wants are unlimited. The opposing issue we have is that of scarce resources. This means that there's insufficient amounts of things that go into making goods and services to be able to produce everything that's wanted by consumers. Now, things is a vague term, and what we'd say instead is factors of production, which are covered in more detail in the next video. So we can now see the economic problem, that there just aren't enough resources to make everything that we could possibly want. In the UK and most Western countries, the economic problem is mostly left to solve itself, with what we call a free market approach, deciding what's produced, how it's produced and for who. And this is done by allowing consumers and producers to interact with each other. Sometimes, however, the government will believe that the market is not doing a good enough job, that too much of some goods and not enough of other goods and services are being produced and consumed. And so they'll intervene in markets or even provide the good or service themselves to achieve what they believe to be a better use of resources. For example, offering free education or healthcare, or making firms increase the price of certain goods so that consumers are less likely to buy them. This is a topic called market failure or limitations of markets and government intervention and is covered later on in much more depth. Because consumers themselves have limited resources in time and money, we have to make decisions on what to do with those resources. As we said before, we assume that consumers wish to maximise their economic welfare, so they'll spend their time and money on whatever gives them the most satisfaction. If a consumer thinks the benefit of one good is greater than another, then they'll pay more for it. For example, the benefit of a car is greater to me than the benefit I'd gain from a Kit Kat. So I'll be willing to spend more on a car than on a Kit Kat. Producers will also have limited resources in their factors of production so have to make choices on what they will produce. We assume, as I said before, that the main aim of firms is to maximise their profits, to make the most money that they can after their costs have been paid. So they will produce the goods and services that they can see that consumers are willing to pay more for. In this way, consumers and producers work together interdependently in the market to solve the economic problem.
what should be produced, how and for whom. When considering what to consume or produce, decisions can be made based on opportunity cost. Consumers will consume what gives them the most benefit for the money and time spent, but in doing this they won't be able to consume other goods and services. Opportunity cost is the next best alternative that you give up when making a choice. For example, if I buy lunch and choose a ham sandwich over a pot of pasta, the opportunity cost of my choice of ham sandwich is the pot of pasta that I give up as a result. It's the good or service given up rather than its monetary value. And it works the same way for producers. A farm could have a choice between growing wheat or potatoes. It can't do both. So if it chooses to grow wheat, then the opportunity cost will be the potatoes that it can't grow as a result. So the opportunity cost is the next best alternative in production that is given up when a choice is made. This applies to economic goods, which are scarce, but not to free goods. These are goods that are unlimited and have no opportunity cost, like renewable energy. If you found this video informative, then please hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Check out the playlist for other videos on GCSE Economics content and also the summaries of economic and business news that's relevant to what you're learning that I'll be posting each week.